How do we design compelling characters with interesting backstories? And then how do we show those backstories? How do we show that information to our fellow players? This is a deep dive into the five questions every PC should be able to answer. And more importantly, every PC should be able to show to your fellow players. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of How to Be a Great GM. In my hand I hold my phone and on the screen here, yes, there we go, thanks, perfect timing, phone. Um, on my phone, as you can see here, I've got the software Portrait Workshop that is the sponsor of today's video, of course, but their software generates portraits thousands and thousands of randomly generated portraits which we can then control. Why am I using them in today's video? Well, they sponsored the video, but more importantly, they're going to help illustrate a point that this entire video is about. How to make your character's backstory actually relevant to role-playing. So often I have players who generate pages and pages and pages of backstory. They have answered all of the potential questions that you could ask. What was the name of the milkman's maid's aunt's uncle's wife's a second cousin twice removed dog? Well, somehow it's in the backstory. It's there on chapter 25b and you can find that on page 4012. None of it, however, is expressed in role-playing, and it's a major failing, as far as I'm concerned, of players and of GMs for not educating their players enough. Yes, I said it. You, as the Game Master, are responsible for establishing how much interest, how much backstory your players are going to be generating for your game, because if you're not using it, if you're not drawing from it, why should they make it in the first place? But what should you draw from it? Well, this is where this video comes in. So when we talk about your character, the first question that you should be able to answer is, where were they born? Now, this is going to have a whole lot of ramifications in terms of the race, in terms of the uh, uh, dress code, in terms of all that kind of stuff. And obviously, that is going to somehow express itself. So uh, let's say, for example, let's choose a species. Let's say half devil is quite exciting. So you're born as a half devil. Now it's busy generating all the various options. And let's say that you were born as a, let's say, um, let's go with male. Okay. So you're born as a male half devil. Where were you born? How did that influence you? What are the things that we can see about your character's birthright? What can we see about your character's birthplace? Was it perhaps, let's say, in the style of, uh, was it perhaps um, something, let's say, a little bit more Chinese in origin? So fans, your character has a fan to indicate that that's how they grew up with the heat of the infernals. They used to have a fan to cool themselves with. Maybe your character has a fan. Maybe your character has a high tolerance for heat. Oh, this is like home where I grew up. It's so nice and hot. Do you see how using your backstory and using your birthright where you were born can make your character that much stronger? Now, as a GM, you should be reading characters' backstories. And so by the time the tiefling or the half devil wanders into the tavern, you can say, it is so warm in here. It reminds you of the fires that used to burn around your little home on the third plane of hell. The PC hopefully will pick up on that and should pick up on that. So if we look at, let's take one of these random portraits. I don't know. Let's see. That's very devil kin like. Um, you know what? Let's go with it. So this one here is the quintessential devil, if you ask me, uh, right down to the little goat beard. Now we can change all of that and we're going to change all of that because once we've looked at the birthright, the birthplace, where the PC came from, we then need to move to the next question which is growing up. What kind of training did they have? Were, was it a harsh growing up? Were they, were they slaves? Were they happy? Were they sad? Were they maltreated? How do we express that? How do you express your origin? Well, it's in your accent. Your parents usually have a strong accent and then you have an accent. It is not necessarily the same accent as your parents. Sometimes parents have very thick accent and it's because they're from old country which speak like this. 
which is the accent that I use for one of the hells that I have in my game. And yet you, as the character, you speak very differently because you grew up, yes, with parents who have that awful old school accent from the old world, but you grew up watching the plays of the humans and you wanted to speak like they spoke because you realized that with a clear diction, you would be amazing. Well, could be something like that. In which case, then, how do you show that? How do you show that you don't want to embrace your growing up era, your learning era? Well, maybe you change your costuming. Maybe you say, well, actually, um, in terms of the outfit, for example, I want the outfit to be uh, something a little bit more reserved, something that doesn't look like what other devils would be wearing. So let's go for this piece of fairly common style clothing. I also don't want them to have that kind of weapon. So let's just change the weapon, I think. Is that accessories? Nope, it's not accessories. It's gear, I think. Yes, there we go. So let's have no gear, for example. So we're trying to make this particular half-devil look as not devilish as humanly possible. We've got all of these different weapons and things. We don't want them to have any weapons. We want them to be a pacifist because they grew up in this dark and dank space and it was awful. Okay, so they're perhaps a pacifist. We also need to try and get away from certain colors and things. So the green is not bad, but maybe we want to try a different color, something that's less evil, less dark, less morose, perhaps, uh, or perhaps brighter. So maybe a blue clothing. Again, you are expressing this as the player by saying, well, my blue cloak, oh, I can't wear that, it's red. I don't want to wear that. I hate red or I hate black. I want to avoid black altogether because that puts me straight back in the pits of hell. So I want colors that you don't see in hell, for example. And I mean, we could refine this as much as we like. I'm just using here. There we go. Look at that. This is the least likely outfit, I think, that a half devil would wear. Uh, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe it, it isn't. It's up to you. But it's about how you express it. How do you show that to your fellows? We then start to talk about your early career because no player, no adventurer, unless you're in an unusual situation, is going to start the moment they turned 12. In a medieval era, maybe they are studying until 16 or 14, depending on what setting it is. Ask your GM, GM, prepare to answer this question. They will have done something. Oh, it might be a blacksmith. It might be that they worked as a tutor. It could be that they stayed at home and lounged off of their parents. There are so many different options for you to choose from, but you need to express that. So let's say, for example, that our character worked as, I don't know, uh, let's say they worked as a hair clipper person thing. A hairdresser would be the right term. So they worked as a hairdresser. Does that work for us? Maybe they should have some fancy kind of hair to show their customers that they know what to do with hair. Maybe it should be, um, I don't know, let's go for something unique here. Well, that's pretty unique already. Uh, there we go. That's pretty unique. And then let's change the hair color. I'm not necessarily um, an advocate of this particular style, but it demonstrates a point. And let's choose that hair color because, again, that's the least demonic that we can think of. So maybe that's what they became, as a hairdresser. So we can see from this, that this is someone who is trying to get away from their heritage as far as possible. Now, it is also something that you as the player will bring to the party because when you are in downtime, it's a case of saying, well, guys, I, I think we need to just spruce up our appearance. We're going to go and see a king tomorrow. We need to look good. I can cut your hair. What? Whoever said I was going they were going to cut hair? You did because you're a great role player. So think about that. That's a really powerful tool. You're expressing your background, and yet you are making a meaningful contribution. And of course, the portrait is reflecting that. So then finally, once you've decided on their early career, something that we always need to answer, and a lot of people fail to answer this, by the way, it's a very important question. Why did they start adventuring? It's a major question, and we need to understand why they started adventuring. There must have been some kind of motivator. Now, in this case, it could very well be that our character was attacked and was shaved bald. 
by ruffians who said, you're a demon, you don't belong here, be gone, creature of darkness. And so they shaved their head off, the, the ruffians did, whilst they were attacking this tiefling. So the tiefling has no hair, but they still have this bright beard, so maybe they're going to try and express the facial hair in a different way. I am completely and utterly just spitballing here, folks, but we could find something, and there are so many options here, I just need something. Uh, let's see, what do we have? Um, that looks a bit mundane. That doesn't look nearly as exciting as it should. Uh, that's weird. That's weird. Weird, 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 weird. Okay, you know what? Let's just, let's go with this one. It's the weirdest one I could find. It's got a little twist at the end. Again, just trying to express that. That they became an adventurer because they got shaved bald and they want to protect people from other horrific acts. And so that's how we go on this journey of creating an interesting backstory, of expressing that backstory verbally as role players, because the whole game is about verbally doing it. And then if you step up your game and you want to create a portrait or you want to do something along those lines, you can. That's great. And that's how the portraits should then support that. Because if we undo this and we put this character in heavy, dark armor that will send us straight back into the pits of hell, and we change the, uh, well, let's not change the color, let's change the color, I should say. Um, and we make it very demonic in tone. So I'm just looking for something here. Maybe that's either dark or that is... Uh, well, let's go with something like that. Even though it's purple, I think that still sort of reflects. And then we give them a standard hairstyle that, let's say, is reminiscent of what we think demons should look like. Um, let's give them that top knot. Let's bring back their horns, by the way. Uh, or let's give them bigger horns to say that they really are demon spawn. Let's go back with these ones. These ones are quite nice. We start to see how all of a sudden the character becomes very different when we say this is the situation, this is their backstory. So I hope you can see that, and I hope, I do hope by the way, that this app hasn't got too much in the way of proving my point. I wanted to prove the whole point, is if you look at that character versus the other character, the flamboyant one, they have very different stories. And they're going to tell those stories very differently. Grew up proud of being a devilkin, proud of being educated into the military straight away. Took their first kill and have the skull token in their top knot to now prove that they are a killer and that they are loyal. Why did they become an adventurer? Well, they're a mercenary for hire. That's why they've got medals on their armor. I mean, you could tell the story however you like based on the portrait or create the portrait to tell the story. That's the important thing. As the GM, you should be plundering and pulling things out of this as well. Your character's got that little effigy in their hair. Where did it come from? Oh, it came from an old military rank that they were part of in their youth? There's an adventure. The military rank now has come back and needs your help. They're in desperate need of assistance. All of that, just from those five basic questions, and I think it's really, really well illustrated if you can verbalize it, if you can bring it into your role playing, and if you have a picture that supports it, that makes it even better. Those are my thoughts in terms of creating an interesting character. I've done v many videos on what questions you should be asking in terms of character creation. And there are lots of them. Let's be absolutely honest. These five, however, five, I think we can all agree, generate I think, the more interesting kind of characters and making sure that you vocalize it. Well, you can't go wrong with that. If this video inspired you in some way, hit that like button down here, I think. If that video made you want to watch more of these videos, well, hit the subscribe button. Then uh, you'll have that little option on the side of your search bar uh, for uh, new videos. You'll see that little green dot coming out. And of course, if you hit that goblin bell, it will alert you when new videos come out, which is every Monday. So, what are your thoughts on character creation? Is this too much? Does this go too far? Or is it not far enough? Do you prefer to write textbooks worth of history? 
as a GM? Do you ever go into your characters' backstories? Do you plunder? Do you pillage? Do you ask these kinds of questions so that you can create adventures specifically around your player characters? And if you don't, why not? It will only elevate your game. I suggest that we uh, look more into this kind of approach to telling our stories, and that will help you become a better GM. Now, your task for today is to create an NPC answering those five questions, or to create a PC, by the way, if you're a player, answering those five questions, birthright, growing up, early career, and then um, five, four questions. What am I doing? Five questions, four questions. Answering those four, que four questions. Answering those four questions and answering them in a way that each answer you are proving how you are going to express that in role playing. So grew up on a farm. How do I express that? They, they, whenever they see a cow, they say, hey cow, because that's what they like to do. And that's what they used to do on the farm. Whenever they, if they grew up in a city, they have street smarts. How are they going to express that? Answer each one of those four questions with a, how are you going to demonstrate it in role playing? And if you're a player, go back to the backstory you've already created look for those points and in your next game do it include it see what a difference it makes it might be subtle at first but after a while people are going to be going wow you guys you take role playing to a whole different level and that's really what we want because that gives more enjoyment everyone starts to do it we all start to have fun and we have these rich stories as opposed to thin ones or slightly empty ones as a lot of people tell me their games are like this week's sponsor, of course, is Portrait Workshop. Portrait Workshop, no stranger to the channel. They continue to improve and enhance their offering um, as they develop this app. They've now added in Devilkin. They've added in hats. Hats are great. Hats are a lot of fun. And they've now added in backgrounds as well. So if I select the background and I go to scene, it now will generate scenes behind the characters, which just helps bring them to life even more and enhances your backstory because now you have a portrait that has a background of where your character grew up. Was it the open plains? Was it in a dark cave? Was it on a beach with beautiful tropical water? In ice caves? In a swamp? In a cold city? All of these options are now included as part of the standard portrait workshop arsenal to help bring your characters to life. Link down below on where you can get hold of this software. Thank you to thank you, thank me, I thank everyone. Thanks to Portrait Workshop for sponsoring today's show. Thank you to all of our Patreons for making these shows possible. And thank you to you for watching all the way to the end. Until next week, I wish you and yours the very happiest of gaming.